The Poem of the Man God, The Second Year of the Public Life, Chapter 146, Goodbye to the People of Sikar, 25th of April, 1945. Jesus says to the Samaritans of Sikar, Before leaving you, as I have other children to evangelize, I want to show you the shining paths of hope and set you on them, saying to you, You may go safely, as the goal is certain. Today I will not quote the great Ezekiel, I will quote Jeremiah's favourite disciple, a most great prophet. Baruch speaks for you. Oh, he really takes your souls and speaks on behalf of them all to the sublime God who is in heaven, your souls. I do not mean only the souls of the Samaritans, but all your souls. O oh, families of the chosen people who have fallen into manifold sins. And he takes also your souls, O oh, Gentile peoples, who feel there is an unknown God among the many gods you worship, a God whom your souls perceive to be the only true God, and whom your dullness prevents you from seeking and knowing, as your souls would wish. At least a moral law was given to you, O Gentiles and idolaters, because you are men, and man has in himself an essence that comes from God, and its name is Spirit, which always speaks of and suggests nobility and urges to holy things in life. And you have compelled it to become the slave of your vicious flesh, infringing the human moral law that you had, thus becoming sinners, also from a human point of view, and you lowered the concept of your faith and yourselves to a level of brutality that makes you inferior to animals. And yet, listen, you all listen. The deeper your knowledge of the moral supernatural law given to you by the true God, the more you will understand and consequently act accordingly. He prays, and this is the prayer that is to be said by your hearts humiliated by a noble humility, which is not degradation or pusillanimity, but an exact knowledge of one's miserable conditions, as well as a holy desire to find means of improving them spiritually. Baruch thus prays, Look down, Lord, from your holy dwelling place. Take heed of us and listen. Look at us, Lord, and consider the dead down in Sheol, whose breath has been taken from their bodies, are not the ones to give glory and due observance to the Lord. The person overcome with affliction, who goes his way bowed down and frail, with failing eyes and hungering soul, he is the one to give you glory, Lord and due observance. And Baruch weeps humbly, and every just soul should weep with him, seeing and calling by their true names the misfortunes that have turned a strong people into a sad, divided, and subdued one. We did not listen to your voice, and so you carried out what you had promised through your servants, the prophets, and behold, the bones of our kings and of our ancestors have been dragged from their resting places and have been tossed out to the heat of the day and the frost of the night. And people died in dreadful agony from famine, sword and plague. And so, because of the wickedness of the house of Israel and the house of Judah, you have reduced this temple where your name was invoked, to what it is today. O oh, children of the Father, 
do not say. Both our temple and yours have been rebuilt and are beautiful. No. A tree split by a thunderbolt from its top down to the roots will not survive. It may just vegetate in a miserable manner through an effort to lift by means of the shoots coming from the roots, which are reluctant to die. But it will be barren brushwood. It will no longer be a healthy tree, laden with wholesome sweet fruit. The ruin that started with the separation grows worse and worse, although the material structure does not appear to be damaged. On the contrary, it looks beautiful and new. It crushes down the consciences that live in it. And then the hour will come when every supernatural flame will be extinguished and the temple will be deprived of its very life. The temple, an altar of precious metal, which can subsist only if it is continuously smelted by the warmth of its minister's faith and charity. And I see, dull, soiled, full of dead bodies, it will become putrefaction, upon which foreign crows and the avalanche of divine punishment will rush to ruin it completely. Pray, children of Israel, weeping with me, your Saviour. May my voice support yours and reach up to the throne of God as it is able to. Who prays with Christ, the Son of the Father, is heard by God, the Father of the Son. Let us say the old just prayer of Baruch. And now, almighty Lord, God of Israel, every soul in anguish, every troubled heart cries to you. Listen and have pity, O Lord. You are a merciful God. Have mercy on us, for we have sinned in your sight. You sit enthroned forever, and shall we perish continually? Almighty God, Lord of Israel, Hear the prayer of the dead of Israel and of their sons who have sinned against you. They did not listen to the voice of the Lord their God. Hence the disasters that have befallen us. Do not call to mind the misdeeds of our ancestors, but remember instead your power and your name. Because we invoke your name and we turn from the wickedness of our ancestors. Have mercy on us. Pray thus, and be truly converted by returning to true wisdom, which is the wisdom of God. It can be found in the book of God's commandments and in the law that lasts forever, and that I, the Messiah of God, have now come to bring to the poor of the world in its simple, unchangeable form, announcing them the gospel of the time of redemption, of forgiveness, of love, of peace. Who believes in that word will reach eternal life. I leave you, citizens of Zikar, who have been good to the Messiah of God. I leave you with my peace. Stay a little longer. Come back again. No one will ever speak to us as you did. May you be blessed, good master. Bless my little one. Pray for me, since you are a saint. Allow me to keep one of your fringes as a blessing. Remember Abel, and me, Timothy, and me, Jeray. I will remember all of you. Peace be with you. They go with him for a few hundred yards out of town, and then they slowly go back.